Hey, welcome to the Cam and Otis Show. On this episode, Mr. James Fu Torres. And I, I tried to I tried to roll my R's, but you know what? Miss Jessica is just gonna slam me on it every time. Uh Air Force vet and podcast extraordinaire dude. Yeah, man, this is uh I, I'm excited to get into this. James, how you doing, bud? I'm doing super good. Uh I came back from uh a trip to Dallas with one of my clients, getting with his steam. I got featured in Forbes on Friday. Um, yeah. you know, big things are happening right now. I'm, I'm very excited about my future. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and and for those of you listening to us on the radio, he does not have sunglasses on, but his future is pretty bright. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Old school, old school. Well, you know what? Since you brought it up, tell us how did how in the world did you get into Forbes? Well, it's uh, mainly by creating strong and genuine relationships with people and leading with value. Mm. Uh, I've been connected with people in the media, uh, kind of like the contributor that just uh, featured me, Melanie Fine, and I just I stumbled upon an ad of her, <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, look, join to my group," and she's creating this community. And I'm like, perfect. Like, I want to I wanna learn from somebody from the inside. And then from there, I look for a link that I found on her page. I got that call. And then just building a relationship and, and asking her, you know, how can I add value to you? Mm. And, and, and that, that's how uh, I, I, I managed to, to set up the, the interview with Jason and flying her out to, to the event to open the new chapter of the ACA in uh, Colorado Springs. That's when we, you know, bond it more, or talk about so many valuable things, and that's how the the features were born based on the conversations that we had. So the the lesson there, and, and I I talk to people about this clients all the time is, you know what, create the relationship. It doesn't hurt to, I mean, people go, oh, it's you know LinkedIn, right? People will go, oh, it's stalking. It feels like no, that's what LinkedIn is supposed to be for, man. If you're stalking people on Facebook, yeah, that's weird. All right. Don't do it on Facebook. Do it on LinkedIn because I'm I'm a firm believer. If you've got a LinkedIn profile, you got a LinkedIn profile so people can connect with you. So mm -hmm. right, right there is is step one. And man, that's there, there is a the way you did it, and, and you just because you, you're Mr. Cool, you just kind of downplayed. I just said, you know, I just wanted to get to know you. How can I help? What can I do? You did all those sort of things that you just so cool about it you know uh, uh i appreciate that <laughs> yeah and I, I was trying to think of uh uh the movie and then i can't think of it now uh from that be cool be cool honey bunny uh oh uh pulp fiction pulp fiction a couple, oh. of, a couple of fonzies cool, here honey bunny. what's fonzie like yeah what's fonzie, fonzie cool. like there we go <laughs> oh <laughs> classic yeah. a yes. classic yes, for sure <laughs> I'm a that that's a great lesson already, but I want to I want to jump back and and how did you how did you decide that public relations, uh, podcasting, helping other people get their stories out is how I translate it was was something that you wanted to do as a business. So initially, I was I knew I wanted to be a business owner. I know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. That was my first thing. That's it. And then from there. I was, what vehicle should I use to accomplish my goals? Because for me, I wasn't like, oh, I, if I, I need to do this or or nothing else, right? I was open to considering because I didn't know any better. I didn't know myself well enough. So I was looking for something that will will combine very well with my lifestyle and that will play into my strengths. So I started looking at what are my strengths and what is out there that is uh, recession proof that is uh, uh pandemic proof right like at the time it was mm -hmm. pandemic proof now i guess the new term is pre-recession proof right but it, that it would be that it would not matter what the economy was happening or, or what's happening in, in, in like in general in the world that i could still do it and that's why i thought about remote like uh, okay i want to do something remote and and i started looking for for different options online just doing my research and uh, i found out about the agency model and that's how I started learning about SEO, lead generation, and PR. 
And PR was the thing that really stand out the most for me because I wanted it for myself. I want to be in feature in Forbes. I wanted to be mm -hmm. in TV and I really accomplished those things because I picked this, right? Like, and that's how I chose PR because I wanted it for myself. And because uh, to my playing to my strengths is I, I build very strong and genuine relationships with people. I've always done that growing up. And I, I, I like talking to people and getting into the why, into the psychology of things, into the stories. That's what's entertaining for me. And, and that's what's entertaining for most people, because as humans, we are natural storytellers. Before the internet and books, we pass everything just by stories. And we still do, even though we have all these things. So that's what I identify that. I identify the need. And because when I was testing things out, SEO, lead generation, PR, PR was the was the thing that was getting me the most amount of responses. And, and people were like, oh, yes, of course, I want to be in Yahoo. I want to be in Forbes. And, 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 and I was like, wow, like there is a need. And, and then I started attaching it to what does this mean in business? Oh, it's building trust. It's, it's sharing through storytelling instead of being salesy. I'm like, hey, buy from me because I'm the best. It's like, no, look at the story. Look at my background. Look at my different things. And, and funnel people through those stories instead of just, hey, buy from me in the next five minutes of not this offer is gone forever. Right. No, the story is there. You can read it as many times as you want. And 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 it's a it's a more pleasant way to communicate your message, in my opinion. And that's why I picked this. You, you talked about, you know, uh, going through your goals and using those as like the guide of, you know, how to how to choose that entrepreneurial venture. Was there another one that was pulling you another direction? Because the goals I heard are, you know, they're, they're very specific in the sense of like what you want to get out of them. But they're very broad in the sense of you probably could have done those in a lot of different areas. So like, what was that other thing that was pulling you maybe that first business idea? First business idea was I wanted to make like a clothing brand or or some a brand. I wanted to create a brand, and and actually that's kind of how I segue into the PR because when I was okay, if I want to create my own brand, and that's why like you see me there with a hat and stuff that like, that's kind of in the time that I was trying to create a brand. That's when that was born, and, and I wanted to have my own like bucket hats. I thought that like, there was not many people who were using bucket hats, and people recognized me by that. So it was like, oh, I'm in a bucket hats, and then I can throw in a shirt and stuff. As long as I have a brand that people can relate to, and and I can drive traffic to myself, and people are invested on it, that they're gonna buy it. So I started learning about. I started thinking, okay, I need to drive traffic, like. That's the main thing. Like, doesn't matter what right. I do, I need to learn how to drive the attention to me, the traffic, and get people to care. That's how I end up learning about SEO lead generation and PR. And then PR was the thing that you know I committed to. Did you uh did you have trouble moving on from there? Because with clothing, especially, and it, we always talk about a lot on the show, like the creative outlet, that it's like that I could see by on your face that that's that was the creative outlet for you. Did you have trouble finding that that new creative outlet inside of the PR space, or did that come naturally? I did have trouble a lot um because it's it's not the 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 brand is something that like is a visual representation and then changing that to PR. Yeah, it is visual a lot, but it's so different that you have to, you have to find the, the angles of the story. It's not just look at my brand. Like it's why you should look at my brand and, and, and why does this benefit you? And, and, and a, a big shift too is, is the, the sales. I mean, it sells is hard. It doesn't matter what you sell. Uh, and, and for me, that was, uh, oh, like just getting somebody to buy a hat. It's like, why? Right. Oh, but then it's cheap. So some people would just support you and just buy it. But when you're asking people thousands of dollars, it's different. It's not like they're going to, oh, like family going to support you. And let me just give you here like $2,000. Right. It's not like that. So for me, it was, it was, it was doing that. Like, how do I still make this enjoyable and, and create a, a, a creative space for me? But at the same time, being able to 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 do business and and to sell high ticket and and to get into into helping businesses make more money, so then they will always pay me because if they always mm -hmm. throw money at me and they make more, then they will always pay me. There's no reason to. So that that was and the creative here became more about how to create an irresistible offer, how to mm -hmm. after you get something in PR, how to leverage it 
uh, and, and, and almost like I say, like milk it, right? Like just get the most amount of value from it. So that is where the creative space, uh, the, the, that's where I get creative, I guess, in, in this, in this mm -hmm. side. Where did the, uh, the storytelling come from? I mean, was that, uh, something you did at the family table growing up or, or where did, where did that come from? I mean, if I, if I were to think to go back to, to as soon as I can remember, it, it's just, I, I guess I'm, I'm Hispanic, right? I'm from Puerto Rico. So in there, we're, we're, we're very tight in family. Uh, so every time that we're together, especially, you know, remembering my, my young times, there was a lot of storytelling because that's why you, you tell kids to make them understand things. They don't care about technical stuff. They care about a story that will entertain them. And if, you, if you can educate them while entertaining them, then great. That's how you get them to actually learn. And, and I guess that's, that's kind of what my parents and, and my grandparents were, were teaching me. Uh, growing up of of the stories and why and and telling me about uh, why should I pick a, a girl with a good family or why should I uh, study hard so I don't have to be at the mercy of other people and all those different things it wasn't like oh you got to study just because I say so even though it kind of was like that in the background but at least they try to to justify it certain ways and and that was the thing that I started th I started using stories to explain people things and and I think most people do to be honest it's like oh like I, I explained this thing okay let me just give you an example so Sally was doing this right like that's how we literally talk that's how we talk most of us so so to to simplify a, a term a, something that is harder to understand so then you bring it a real life example and then you can visualize it and see it and understand it i gotta test your memory do you remember a, a story from the childhood days you know that maybe a a, a mom or grandfather or an <laughs> uncle somebody somebody that it's just kind of like stuck with you I mean, I I remember, I remember stories about uh, my my great grandparents uh, because my great grandparent uh, he he's the foo right like the foo is the Chinese where where he came from so that story is something that really stand out to me because I used it so many times to explain people why I was foo so my great grandparent uh, Ben Fu Chu he moved he's from from China moves to New York. Then my great grandma, uh, Julia Soto, she moves from uh, Puerto Rico to New York. That's how they met. And then she's like, she's uh, Puerto Rican, but with uh, African descent, because we have African Spaniards and and, uh, and natives, Indians. Uh, it, that's our core of our ethnicity, right? Like uh, what we are as Puerto Ricans. And so that combination between like a, a some a Puerto Rican from African descent that look kind of African and then a, a Chinese guy. And that's how I have curly hair, but I have Chinese eyes and, you know, I have all these different things. So that's, that's a story that really stand out because I've, you know, they was told to me and then I used it until today. Look, I'm still using it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story. And I, I love that. And, and, you know, I think what's, what to me, what uh, really impressed me on it also is, is the fact that you could remember your great grandparents' names like that, and it's because of that story that you now to what is it, Marvel Comics and the origin story sort of thing? Well, you know, there's there's your origin story, right? And and that's that's a really cool way of thinking about it. And and what's what's the what's the life lesson from that? So for me it was growing up i mean i i just for me was i'm special like i'm different and, and and that that thing and my grandparents uh especially my grandpa uh grandpa foo right that's how i call him <laughs> uh he 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 always told me like look you have a a, a unique last name and, and this means something this when because you stand out like you're not so this is something that you gotta you gotta protect your reputation and everything because people will remember you. You're not gonna pass uh as somebody that like oh another Torres, another Rivera, another you know all these like different common names. So because of that, I think that translated very well for me to push myself into an entrepreneurial journey because I always thought that I was special and I know that 
you know, and you guys know, like being an entrepreneur is not easy. So you have to have like a, a drive that pushes you through through challenges, because if not, then you'll quit. And you're like, oh, I can just do a job. Like, just I don't want the responsibility. So I feel that that was a big thing that that because of my last name, my story and, and, and how like this had to happen and so to to for me to be born and, and and just studying about like the the probabilities of of someone to be born you know and all those different things have have allowed me to feel that I'm special and to look for a purpose and and that's how I ended up in PR because I want to amplify the impact of of business leaders that are are doing something good in the world and and that's that's my purpose like i that's what i what what is pushing me through very huge challenges throughout the journey uh just learning lessons right uh it's it's been rough but you know like i'm here i just was feature in forbes and i got my clients in forbes i got my clients in tv i, I have all, all these different things because i i pushed through and i think that that influence uh a little I think the storytelling aspect is so interesting there because it's like, you know, you, you could say this, every single person has a story. And as the uniqueness of one person's story, it looks so different than anyone else's, but it is still unique to you. And, you know, it might not have as many different components as somebody else's story, you know, the story that gets a full book written about them and they wind up being famous because what happened to their childhood and all that kind of, you know, the probabilities and those type of things. But then I think the interesting thing is when you start to look at your own story is that you still see all of the chance that was involved there to get to where you are now and all those different aspects there. And I, I love what you're saying, what you were saying of like, you know, your, your last name is unique in that sense. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, one of my good friends, uh, dad, Amir, and he asked me, he was at a Scottish bar and he was like, why do you, why do Scottish people always introduce themselves with their last name? And I really like, you know, just half-assed jokingly was like, Oh, cause it means something to us. Like, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm Camden McGregor. I'm not just Camden because I'm at McGregor because it goes back to King Gregor of Scotland. It doesn't like, how related are we to King Gregor of Scotland? Not that related, probably, you know, go, go and start doing the genetic math on that one. But it's like just having that idea in the back of your mind is like, oh, no, no, I'm from King Gregor. Like, I'm I'm royalty, you know, um, what's the zero guy mode ring? Royal is my race is the is the family saying like, all these type of things. And it's like, as much as that's not unique to just McGregor's or Foo or, you know, wherever else you go, having your story can give you that kind of a power to help to carry you through. Um, and I, I think I know the answer to this one, but is that what a strategy that you use uh, working with your clients, helping them to tell their story and understand that importance and significance of, you know, those probabilities? Definitely. Because people don't do business with, with businesses. People do businesses with people and, and they do businesses with brands that they relate to their story, to their mission, to their vision. And, and those those are the three key points that we we hammer when we do PR campaigns because we're not aiming to just get press moments. Uh, maybe in the beginning I was because I didn't know any better. But moving forward now that I'm growing my team, I have people with over 25 years of experience working under me, and they they coach me too. And and, they, and now we're not pro we focused on just press moments. We focus on creating movements. That's what we're doing. We're just not like, oh, you're featuring Forbes, you know, great. It's 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 all the different components that you do and how do you combine it with your branding and content and publicity strategies to maximize your, your visibility, your reach, your authority, so that you can actually have a, a big impact in the world. So for me, it, it, it goes, it starts now into the branding first. And then the branding, that's the story. Like why, why have, like, for example, I was just in uh, with David A. Press. You say like, that's a very common name, but then he's an albino Mexican-American. Oh, that's the different thing. And then that's what he uses it. So it's like, look, when I was growing up, uh, I was in a short bus. People thought that like I couldn't play outside with the other kids because I was going to get burned, all those different things. And he was on a position that you would think that all those different things will will damage his 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 self-esteem and, and not being able to accomplish things like, you know, building a, a, a great productive team and, and having uh, a combined of businesses making over $20 million a year, right? And the story of him even being picked up and bullied and all these different things that people can relate to that a lot. I mean, I can relate to that too. Like a lot of people can. And and and, and being able to, to just, you know, whatever happened, whatever happened with your family, your upbringing, 
you can you be live in the United States of America and you have the the chance to to create your own reality and to build your own economy, which is his message. Build your own economy. Doesn't matter what's happening, you can always build your own economy. You see, and that's that's what we what we do. It's it's even though he doesn't have a name, right? Like he doesn't he has a very common name, but then he used other things about him to make himself relatable to to describe his mission and his vision mm -hmm. to so people can now jump in this movement right to build your own economy how did you learn that lesson because i think that's a really fundamental thing the, the creating a movement vice let me just get an ad out there right i mean because anybody can you know save up a little money write a check and you know buy buy an ad on tv in a, in a newspaper or Sorry, magazine, because hardly anybody reads newspapers anymore. But, you know, you know or a podcast, ad, advertisement, whatever. Anybody can do that, right? So how did, how did you, from your business point of view, shift from, yeah, I can get you into this, I can get you into that, to the larger picture of the movement? And I, I love that terminology, too. So I think that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah, so everything is kind of reverse engineering what I see successful people doing. Mm. So I look at people like Alex Hormosi, uh, Brad Lee, Gary V, uh, like even Tony Robbins, uh, like even Grant Cardone, all these different people, how are they so big? Like how? Like they alone couldn't do it. Like it, it's because people got behind them and because they get behind them, they become great affiliates, great uh, promoters of their brand because they start sharing their content and start mm -hmm. quoting them. And, and all those different things are happening because they created a movement because they, they didn't do it about just, oh, I'm just want to do good work for my clients and that's it. It's about changing the world in a way like changing how people look at their specific stuff and and making themselves relatable and and have a mission that people can can get to it which is mission is what you're doing right now and then vision is where you're going right so when you do those three things together you're relatable you have a mission that it's that that matters and people are very timely, let's say, right? Like it, people, it's trending or people want it to trend or people just feel the the purpose that that they they want to be part of that mission too. And then from there, like the vision, okay, how as a collective we're going, where are we going together? What what are our goals? And when you combine those things and start looking up, you know, Gary V. Like what he's doing now, he's entering to a place that is in, is incredible now because of with NFTs now, he has his own cartoons basically that it started by him drawing on a paper, and then from mm -hmm. there like they took it on a computer to start doing things. Now they're doing cartoons that are short films about it. Now they have also collectibles that are physical that you can buy, and they're like cards that you have, and has like all those different things now because he he created a movement. Now he's is not just because Gary V. It's cool to to follow. It's because of his whole ecosystem of V friends and Vayner Media and all these different components under the brand of him. And that's what we're doing with clients. Uh, with our clients with like Jason, for example. It's not Jason Miller, and that's it. It's Sab in the community and the podcast and all these different things to create a movement that everybody can get behind on. And we're still working uh, uh, on on actually, you know growing and everything but you know that we have the components like community for example it's a big one uh creating a community and for that like they have to get behind something so that's that's uh how i connected all this <laughs> yeah i think uh a lot of the time and in each industry, it's different, but where you're looking for the successful person and then attempting to duplicate what's going on there. And I'm, I'm hearing that there, but it's also not just a duplication and it's a mimicry. It's okay, what's the core elements that's working there? And then how can I translate that? How do you, how do you, how do you move beyond just modeling the success to creating uh, something new? Some, you know, the the pieces of the innovation rather than just saying, okay, hey, they did X, Y, Z, we're going to do X, Y, Z. How, how do you take it beyond that? The focus is creating your own lane. That is, that is, everything stems from that. So, because when you create your own lane, you're the first to it. So you're ahead. So you're the leader of it. So everything is is thinking like that. So how can we create our own lane 
So that way we can dominate it because we created it. And and and, and the, so what other people are doing that is successful, we're using it as a framework rather than a, a perfect roadmap step by step. Right. It's mm-hmm. just a framework. What elements of what they're doing is working and what what of them can we even do better that they're than them? And and, and just mix what's working with the things that are kind of working but can be done better and how we we combine that to the to relate very specifically to the brand for them to create their own space and and and, and that way it's like their own lane and now people can follow here and then if there's others that come after that doesn't matter like you you open it up and you're ahead so as long as you stay innovative which is just you know what's happening serving uh your 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 customers like what's happening in the market testing testing things out new things constantly to see get the feel of what's happening in the market and you know just that's how you stay ahead <laughs> how do you how did you cuz this is I find this really interesting because most entrepreneurs uh, want to hit the ground running. I mean, it's it's like I got an idea and I'll figure it out as I go along and I'll find customers as I go along. I got a good friend of mine, Dan, uh, Dan Vega, who always talks about find the customer first, then create your business. But most entrepreneurs do it the other way. And it sounds like you you used a little bit of uh, some old school patience and reconnaissance and dug into well, what's working out there. How how did you how did you hold yourself back in that you know? And, and I'll just I'm gonna make an assumption here. After you left the Air Force, uh, you know, and it's like I want to be an entrepreneur. All right, how do I make money? Uh, and how do I be successful? All these things happening at once. What, what walk us through a little bit of that story. For me, it was about how I, I, I started. It's, it's a lot about perspective. This is a key word for me, perspective, because I started looking. So what I did, and I think I did very good is I'd be even before getting out of the air force, I invested on a coaching program. So I invested in a coaching program that they taught me lead generation, uh, SEO, and PR six months prior to getting out of the Air Force. And I already had a job lined up with Intel here in, in Hillsborough, Oregon. So I created a safe space for myself to then allow myself to learn these things. And instead of just getting stuck on learning, 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 and never taking action, I was focused on learning minimum viable product that that, then I can take to the market and make money with and then leveling out from there. But it was like, I learn and I take action. I learn and I take action. And and, and that's how I still do it that way. Uh, Right now, I just went to a rebranding because I learned about this, how to do this right. And then went and flew to to Dallas to help my client with it. I learned it. I apply it to myself. I practice where I preach. And then I I go and apply with others. And that's mm-hmm. uh, why I consider myself like a trailblazer because I'm opening the path uh, to to then go back and, and tell my clients, hey, I just I just checked out this path. This is good. Like just follow me this way. And, and that's that's how I I have this balance between I want to take massive action, uh, but then at the same time I don't I I want to make sure that I that I I'm patient that I'm patient and I don't, I don't, I don't do things without thinking. It's more like I, I just take it on smaller things that are, look, learn this, think about it, analyze and take action. What's happening? What are you missing? And then from there, just kind of go back and forth with that, like learn more, apply, learn more, apply. And that's how I, so I've been able to create my team because I learn from them, but I'm also learning from other people mm-hmm. and bringing it to them. And then we we have this this between my my friends and my team and my supporting network like even Jason Saab and all these different people that I'm connected with even you now, <laughs> all this so uh, and that's um, how how I balance this out. Do you, um one thing that I think that you know we talk about all the time as entrepreneurship is like the shiny object of chasing that shiny object, and almost always that's the business idea, and it's like I want to you know go start this business you know change it this way all those different things. 
what you just had me think of James is the shiny object for learning something. And I, that, now that I've thought of it, I could definitely know I've fallen into that trap before where it's, you know, you read the new book and you're like, Oh my gosh, that whole marketing strategy I've been doing. It's terrible. Throw it out. And then, you know, so you write the new marketing strategy and then you go and then somebody else recommends a book and you read that one. You're like, Oh wait, so everything that last book is okay. No, go on to the next one. How do you keep learning, but then still synthesize things into what you have without going through that, you know, shiny object cycle like that. It's by talking with other people about it. Cause I, I, I know I've learned like even my clients have called me out or, or like people in my, in my team, it's like, don't shoot from the hip. Like don't, don't just learn something and just like shoot it. It's like analyze and make sure because for my clients, uh, especially there are people that are, they have so much, so many things in their minds. They don't need for me to just come in with fresh ideas completely, like all the time. They have to be like, hey, this is proven. Uh, and, and this is why you should do this. And this is the thing that I need you to do, period, nothing else. Like, don't bring more ideas for me to to start thinking, uh, like you said, like, oh, am I doing mm-hmm. this wrong? And like, I'm learning from here and you're t- telling me this thing. So everything is it's based on, I try to to come in with a very strong justification that oh, why we should do this instead of like, oh, I just heard from this person that this is what should we be doing. And I, I fall into that, to be honest. I mean, I have and, and I've learned from it and and maybe mm-hmm. I will do it again because I get excited and I say something that I shouldn't like I'll shoot him for the hip. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> right. But but I I'm aware of it and, and being mm-hmm. aware of it allows me to like think am i am i shooting from the hip am i like jumping the gun here and, and i and that's why i talk it out with people because i get it out of my mind in us in safe spaces like with my team or with jason mm-hmm. or you know with certain people that i know that i i'm in that space of we're just kind of creating we're like look i learned this what do you think about that and they they ask me very tough questions and and, and i'm like get me thinking like thought-provoking questions i ask them that too and that's how we create it's just going back and forth, testing testing things out, uh, actually by taking action or by just doing research uh, of what's happening. Uh, and that's why there's certain things that are we identify as like anchors that are like podcasting. Like it's just how to do it. Okay, there's a lot of ways, but doing it, it's like no brainer. Right. And you guys know that that's why you guys have a podcast, I'm guessing. Right. No, <laughs> this is very, very difficult work. I just want to say that uh, there's a lot. Years of planning years years <laughs> yeah uh so you know those different things of like the podcast or like being in social media okay which one and how to do it that that takes a lot of things but the fact that you have to be there you know that's that's something there's certain things that you know you have to do and then we strategize giving of research and talking and in doing uh, what, what's your ideal client wants what's the experience that they expect all those different things and that's how we come up with the strategy for each one of those can you can you share a, a story of a client that you've i, I don't know I, I in my mind i'm saying flipped around they were like ah you know posting random things or doing random appearances whatever whatever it was where you 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 brought them into a, a process of storytelling and, and creating that movement. Can you, can you share a story? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Sadiq advisor board is a big example. Uh, mm-hmm. When I got to Jason's life, uh, he did not know anything about PR, anything like he made all his money with just good marketing and, and good results. And people talk about it. That's it. Like nothing else. Like I'm good at selling. I'm good at fulfilling. And then a little bit of marketing sprinkle around, but then voice uh, the, the referrals was what was actually speaking. So when I introduced PR to them, they changed their whole way to go about marketing. They started prioritizing PR as their main marketing strategy. And then everything stemmed from it because now like uh, having the logos, having the the pieces that people can go and read and 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 relate to became, became a, a big a big way of people feeling identified with them. And then you seeing those creatives uh, because now you have content. Like when you get uh, featured in the media, when you go to podcasts, you go just any PR related activities that you do, 
they're great content, especially if you have them recorded and everything was like the, the framework was uh, was perfect or ideal to to shop up into content. So that way it, it it's it's a great way to to start with uh, the creative of the content and then stem it from there. So that's that's something uh, for example, um, with with Jason and, and the Advisor board by bringing, a Forbes contributor to the event to be to cover it there and and, and adding uh, uh, the authority, it allowed that relationship between the Jiga Bicer Board and the American Club Association, which is association established in 1882. So become so like to close the deal basically because they felt so good as like the president of the ACA was like, damn, it was always a dream for me to be featured in Forbes and and and. And uh, that 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 feeling of like, damn, you're adding value to me in ways that not even money could just buy, right? Like it's not an ad, and, and that 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 is what is creating like this this big thing now that Strategic Advisor Board together with the ACA that now Strategic Advisor Board is taking care of all the executive uh, clubs that they have around the U.S. and everything was based on PR. Because PR was the the way that they they managed to to kind of get into because it was so pleasant and so exciting to have Forbes covering the event and 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 then she was talking there too so it wasn't just like covering it she was actually there putting her thoughts into it and you know it was it, taking James Donaldson too that's a PR move too right like being able to to have that relationship and bring in a, a, a NBA superstar or an ex NBA superstar, all these different things is our PR and combined together have made SAP level up as, as a business and as a community. All right. I got, I got a, I got a curveball to throw at you. How does a PR guy do PR for himself and his business? <laughs> I told yeah, you, I gave yeah. you a heads up. Here comes the curveball. <laughs> you definitely, definitely, that's definitely a curveball for me because. It's tough. It's tough. And that's why I focus a lot on uh, on adding value to people that then I can tell them, look, this is who I am. This is what I do. And you do PR on me because like, I, it's hard for me to do it on myself. I can do edits and make sure fact check and everything. I mean, all my clients do that, right? It, it's, uh, it's, it's a normal thing to check because sometimes they miss something while we're talking. But but writing about yourself, it, it's it's a little it's a little tough, and, and and you know the best PR people will always tell you that, and, and and that's why it's good to have team members and to have outside people to to support this because they have they have a different eye, and and if you surround yourself with people also that have uh they're very talented in writing and 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 just creating stories in general, as long as I give them all the information. That's how um how I I being able to then obviously I have the connections and in, in different things but it's 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 definitely not uh an easy thing because it it's it's tough to just talk about yourself and to because you know like you don't want to like glorify yourself too much or whatever or, and sometimes you don't even know where to start like you don't so so that's mm -hmm. I focus for for example for this fourth piece what are the valuable things that I'm going to say for the audience? And then the rest, like somebody will take care of it basically, because it's like my story. I'll just, I just got with my copyright and I told him, look, this is where I'm from. This is all the different things. And he wrote all that stuff. And I just make sure that I, the takeaway for the audience, uh, it's, it's what I focus on. And then, you know, the rest I get help for. <laughs> you, you've referenced, uh, you know, just, throughout all these uh, our conversation a lot of different organizations and technology and things that you want to be utilizing for PR um talking about the changing landscape there not in the tech side like you know the new technology the new app or whatever it is and those type of things but what i'm more curious about is like the organizations how you would have you know forbes is a good example because to me they still have lasting power kind of generationally but then there's a lot of other organizations out there that you know just to throw you out there dad that mean a lot to you that don't mean a lot to my generation but then it's like you still need that check mark in order for them to buy from you know from from us because it's like oh you were on you know 
a main broadcast channel versus being in a magazine or whatever it is. You know, it's like uh, I've I've heard people, uh, comedians joke about this. It's like you have to have a Netflix special, even though that's not worth it anymore. You don't get paid for it. It's like because my mom doesn't respect me unless I get the Netflix special. Like and those type of little things where it's like the organizations and the sense around those organizations change. Uh, what what do you think that means? in PR as far as looking for the right organizations, checking those boxes for like different generations who value things differently, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's based on you knowing who is your ideal client and where do they get their news from? Mm -hmm. So that's a key question that I ask all my clients. Uh, where does, does your, uh, your, your ideal customer look at their news where do they get their information where do they get their advice is there influencers in the space that they're getting advice from uh is there any particular publications that they are more leaned into uh consuming every morning or whatever uh so or what it's like trade publications uh, different mm -hmm. every and that's something that i i ask i get with the client you know your client better than anybody right because it's you being successful and that's why i deal with people for the most part i help people starting out with like i can help you with a press release or something but they, you know it's not my focus i don't market to them if i do that it's because I'm, I'm it's a favor like i'm helping but my focus is people that already have a fire started and like they they have identified that that they fill up a need and they're profitable now it's how do i put more fuel to this fire to make it bigger and take a national and impact hundreds of thousands if not millions of people so mm -hmm. because my ideal client already know who his ideal client is and and obviously there could be smart tweaks or something but they are, they know their core of their audience and and what they want that what's the need that they're feeling so if they already know that and they don't know where they get the news then they go just go survey them survey them ask them like where do you get your news like just quick text or like, an email like what do you mm -hmm. what do you consume your news where do you um what are you in the influencers in, in the space that you that you look up to when when you're looking when you're trying to find uh an answer of something do you go to youtube to look for it what kind of keywords what people do you have favorite already what do you subscribe to all those different things is what we do to be able to make sure that we're getting in the right publications there is certain things like you said that are like nationally recognized, like being in Forbes or uh, being in national TV, like Good Morning America or like uh, CBS Mornings, things like that, that they're ingrained in our brain because we've seen them across the mainstream. So those mm -hmm. are like, well, if I get there, that's like a, a check mark that will be, a, that will cover a lot of people. But then it's all about what does success means to you? is if it's being in new york times and that's just because that's probably not going to drive sales but we can get you there right we can as long as we have the right angle and we we can get you there but if if, if it's just for sales like maybe you should go more local more niche down that maybe it's not hundreds of thousands of people that will see it but maybe it's a couple thousand that that they, there are a lot of the right people are in it and that's why yeah. like the power of of being in the right podcast is so so big because it, it could be a thousand people listening to the episode but if, if a thousand people 800 of them are, are your ideal clients or something it's like way better than going a hundred thousand people and just a bunch of you know people and that are not even business people right so that's that's how we go about that where do, where do you see this this going you know like it, it's it's it is interesting i do find it very interesting that uh you know, Good Morning America has is still they they've maintained. Actually, I, I guess you could say really all three of the morning shows, right? The NBC one, the Today Show, uh, the the CBS this yes, morning or or today whatever theirs is called. I'm drawing a blank. And <laughs> Good Morning America, but those have been around for you know they're like the Tonight Show, right? I mean, the Tonight mm -hmm. Show is still going with from uh, the guy who started it before Johnny Carson. When you think about that, what's, what's next on the horizon in that sense, or, or I'll give you the option or both. And this is an and, or, all right. Or what's the thing that's going to sustain and be enduring going, you know, next 10, 20 years. So everything that I've seen, and this is based on, you know, learning from, experience and Gary V and all these different people that I follow would I which I consider the gold standards of businesses right now they 
every brand that is putting content out that is using influencer marketing that are tapping into making it about infiltrating into tight communities and, and into the people instead of to the masses like being more very more more targeted those are the brands that will stay and and will will withstand time because uh, right now look at Mr Beast for example one of the most viewed i think the most viewed youtuber in in the world and because of content because being relatable because being wholesome or so people call him because he donates so much money on all these different things he created a burger joint the other day and and like a hundred thousand people show up the first day and the burger was bad the <laughs> burger was bad now they change and apparently it's a little better but the point is is easier to make a good product than to grab attention. So if you're good grabbing attention and you can keep people hooked in a community in 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 a confined space almost that that you can influence them heavily, that's worth way more than than just like just shooting a, on on ad on Good Morning America or, or like mm -hmm. you see that it's it's how do you get yourself relatable and in and, and make sure that you're talking directly to the person as much as you can. And that's why like communities and uh, like the, the, the voice things now, I don't know if you heard like box, box drop or something voice. I don't know. Forgot the name now that's trending. Every coaching program that I've seen is, uh, is using it now. So you can just, uh, Oh, you get voice access with me. And instead of having like zoom calls and everything, you submit the voice and then they give voice back. And, and that's what, because it's directly connected, but then I respond on my time. And instead of being text, I had no emotion then it's it's uh, audio. So doing those mm -hmm. things and and showing up constantly on social media with with golden nuggets, like dropping bombs, like that, those are the things that would keep you on top of mind and will help your brand to withstand time. If you don't, then just like what time that you're just gonna fade away because you're not keeping up with what people what people consider as what matters the most it's talking directly to it with them and feel personally connected even if you're a huge brand like gary v still talks to people directly all the time and he's a huge brand and that's why he keeps growing because it's wow like I, I can go and see him and shake his hand and talk to him he makes himself available even though he's so big so content make yourself available relatable create tight communities where you can have people uh unified or on a unified message or unified mission that's ambition that's that's what it's uh gonna make brands withstand time do you think that even you know working in those smaller communities and you know approaching it with that strategy that there's still going to be a need for you know that proverbial check mark from good morning america or whatever it is you know it's it's like a lot of uh i think a lot of business has gone through this where it's like you need the brick and mortar store even though all your business is online it's like i still need something because then it's like people will know i'm real and that kind of stuff it's like if i just go on good morning america once you know it's like being on shark tank even if you don't get the money you could be like i was on shark tank and then that helps to build the community do you think that's like a superficial thing that will kind of die away as those things die away? Uh, or do you think that's going to be something that's necessary for that community building? It's, um, they're different strategies. So I think always national, uh, maybe if the names die, uh, you know, still there's going to be something that's going to replace it. It's not yeah. like national news. Uh, it's going to go away and all these different things are going to go away. And And the thing that I see it is, the only way to gain trust at scale is with PR and, and mm -hmm. those different things that, Oh, good morning, America. And uh, like Wall, Wall Street Journal, New York times, all uh, Forbes, all those different logos like GQ stops people from scrolling that never seen you before. And never like, how can somebody relate to you if they don't even stop to look at you first? So those mm -hmm. things are to stop from people from scrolling, basically to stop them, and and to see then like who who is this guy like what is he saying like why is it this guy deserves to be in GQ or Good Morning America, mm -hmm. uh, and then you listen to him and then like oh maybe I should check out more stuff and then you start relating to him and then you're in the community and then you know they got you, but but to stop you from scrolling that's why I seen in Bloomberg Yahoo uh, uh, all those things are they have so much value and that's why I give mm -hmm. to people because. 
is for them to give to for people cold people to give you the chance to 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 lit like just to listen to you and and the other thing is for the on the fence people that are like oh like i don't know if i should like it sounds good or whatever and then you see these things now it's like oh okay like okay i'm gonna move forward because i feel better Mm -hmm. because how i call these things are are like trust indicators Uh, people are looking for either green flags or or red flags to either work with you or to not work with you And, and they're gonna google you they're gonna look at your social media they're gonna see the comments they're gonna see what people are talking about you and 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 where have you been like who's endorsing you and when you are in a publication like that it's kind of like an endorsement or a referral and people feel that that more open to trust you because those are green flags or trust indicators and if they don't see those things and they see bad reviews or they see other things those are red flags and those are things that people will mm-hmm. avoid working with you and and that's our old things too that look if something happened and you need to deal with it. That's another thing that we actually help because we, our, our, our line, our tagline, new tagline is we get people featuring the media or we keep them out of it, which is a key, key thing nowadays because cancel culture is very real. And when something happens, we're all humans. As long as we go head first and we, we, we face it and we have a crisis management kit or, or go to, to, to deal with these things, which is something that we encourage all of our clients to have because we're trying to create, you know, we're working on a movement. So there's going to be haters. There's going to be people trying to scrutinize you, especially when you're going to be a national brand. You're going to be something, there's always going to be those things. So th- those are uh, my take on uh, on this. It's, it's important. Uh, it's not, it's just about strategy and what stage are you in the in the business and what you need at the moment. Mm-hmm. I think just to just add one thing before you go, Dad, I think it's really interesting, you know, talking about those as like trust indicators. And it's the, you know, like Good Morning America, so keep using it as the example. It's not that there's so many people listening to it. It's that that name still resonates. So it could be 100 people that watch that every day in 15 years. But if that name, if everyone still knows that name, then it still works for that trust indicator. So I think that's a really interesting way of looking at it. It's the familiarity. Mm-hmm. When something feels familiar, then you don't feel like you're gonna get scam or anything because it's it oh like it it's some it's a brand that I know like and trust or at least I know of better than not knowing of anything about places that you've been featured or people that have endorsed you because you can have a dope testimonial but I don't even know you like is this even worth it like I don't know you but then you you're just like a lot, little piece of something in in the media and Forbes is like I know Forbes. You know, even yeah. <laughs> so that's the familiarity <laughs> concept. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that, and it establishes that that leverage of proof that you are who you say you are, right? And I think that's such an important piece. And uh, man, uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of notes and a lot of lessons and stars next to some of the notes, and uh, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna break my normal cycle. My normal cycle. Is it's like something that was said in the first five minutes is 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 like yeah that's it that's my lesson, but today with with you James you you gave us so much, and I, I'm circling back around to one of the last things you said, which is uh, gaining trust at scale with a with a PR firm. firm. That that's a powerful way to look at it, and I think that's a that's a really unique approach. To, to establish how important it is the services is that yeah, the services that you provide and I think that's a really unique way of looking at it is is gaining gaining that trust at scale uh through through your firm I and mean, that, that's awesome so Camden how about you what'd you learn yeah, it's just the uh, really the importance of knowing your own story. I think we talk about it as entrepreneurs and like in a marketing perspective, you know, story brand and all those different things. But really what I kind of realized is how important it is just to know it just for you as a person and understanding your story and to make, you know, to help you feel the unique history that's behind you and your family and all those different aspects of who you are, and what makes you unique, because that's a much better way to go through life than just thinking you're a cog in a machine, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, it's important to know your story. Yeah, and I would add to that that people don't remember most of the words that you tell them, but they remember how you make them feel. 
Mm -hmm. So the words that are attached to a feeling are the words that are actually remembered. So that's why it's it's so important to to have the story and to be relatable and to show a force because they get excited. And oh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I, I got people like friends of my mom being like, oh my God, I seen you grown and look at you now. And it it, it, it that they will remember this because I make them feel something. And that's that's why I I I try to to do with everybody. I I am not I'm not trying to like please people or anything necessarily. I want to entertain and educate as much as possible. So because if I want to educate you, I need to make it about a feeling so I know that you remember. Because I know that that that's how I remember too, and how most people do. So that's I just want to add that. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. How about you, James? What'd you learn? I I learn about how um how the getting perspective of of people that don't you know they don't, you guys don't know much about PR and you guys probably haven't you know have a conversation with a PR expert like me before and and I learn about what are the questions that people have like what are the things that people think when they think PR that's what I was getting mm -hmm. from you guys and and gave me perspective and it kept me on my toes. Like, you know, you're like throwing me a curveball and, and things that's something that never have, nobody has asked me that I've talked to about it with my team. And like, they tell me like, look, you can't do your own PR. Like literally, like they tell me that. And, and that's why it's not the first time that I hear it, but from somebody from the outside uh, telling me that. So it, it was, that's, that's what I would say. It gave me perspective. All right. I got, I got one that you just brought up though. I, I wasn't going to ask this, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it because I know you. Now, when your mom's friends are like saying, how great, wow, look what you're doing. Look what little James is doing. Do they pinch you on the cheek when they say that still? Uh, I mean, that was that was online, but if <laughs> I was there, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we're very touchy people in, yeah. in Puerto Rico. Like it's just, and that's something that I, I learned a lot of moving to the States. We kiss on the cheek with people and all these different things. And when I came here, I had to learn how to not be too touchy with people because <laughs> it, it was natural to me, but it's not natural yeah. for people here. Oh, that's mm. awesome. So James, how do people find you, follow you, hire your hire your PR firm? What's, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Shortest way, James L, that's in Lewis, Foo, F-O-O. That's it. You put that on Google, you'll find me because all my social media is there. And then after you're on my social media, I always have my link tree everywhere. So you can click there and you can join my community, my Slack community. You can watch my podcast episodes. You can see all my features like the Forbes feature, LA Weekly, Yahoo, being in TV, all that in there. So if you want to get to know me better and I'm very, very reachable. So any social media, you can always send me a message. Uh, you can always just go to, to my Website to Imperium Authority. I uh, kind of how it sounds, Imperium. If if not, then just put James Futores on Google, and then you know go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, just uh, my my number is out there. My my email is out there too. And uh, very like, there's so many ways. Just shoot me a message, however however you feel comfortable, and I'll, I'll get back to you somehow. <laughs> awesome, man, man, I really appreciate it. This is uh, this has been great and uh, great education for us all. Uh, thanks again for your time. Thank you for, for having me. This was fun, and uh, I think it was educational, too. So I like it. Awesome. Camden, run us up. All right. Thank you all for listening to the Cam and Otis Show. And a special thanks to our guest, James Fu Torres, for joining us today. And, of course, our sponsor, Tribe and Purpose. Find your tribe, find your purpose. Get started for free today at findyourpurpose.coach. Make sure to follow the Cam and Otis Show on Instagram and Facebook. And please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Videos of the podcast are on our YouTube page. And you can always get a full archive of our episodes at thecaminotisshow.buzzsprout.com. Thanks again. We'll see you all next time.